the two communities of Hilldale, Utah, and Colorado City, Arizona, may be formally separate towns on paper, but in fact, they form a single community in more ways than one. Formerly known as Short Creek, the community is the headquarters of the FLDS Church, a polygamist cult and small splinter group that separated from the main body of the LDS Church, commonly known as the Mormon Church, after it ceased the practice of polygamy in 1890. Although the two are often deemed synonymous, polygamy in the FLDS Church differs significantly from the plural marriage doctrine practiced by the Orthodox LDS Church prior to the 20th century. First, in order to reach heaven, FLDS men are told that they must have a minimum of three wives. Thus, the entire FLDS population ostensibly lives in a polygamous household. Compared to about a quarter during historic LDS polygamy. Second, in FLDS polygamy, the consent of the other woman is not required, nor is the consent of the man's first wife. Third, the wives are allocated by the FLDS leadership as though they are a commodity. Neither partner chooses the other, ruining even the unlikely event in which a polygamous family is a safe, happy, and functional one. Polygamy may be illegal in the United States, but that doesn't stop many FLDS adults from living together as though they were husband and wives, or the under-the-table enforcement of a polygamous lifestyle for thousands of people by the FLDS Church. Such a demographic balance quickly became unsustainable, so the leadership eventually began plucking girls to be groomed as wives for faithful men, eventually reaching down into the fourth and fifth grades to do so. The result is a colossal neglect of children and spouses, endemic poverty, rampant domestic abuse of all kinds, inbreeding, incomplete education, and more, all kept in place by an FLDS-dominated police force, economy, and a general social atmosphere that has often been compared to Afghanistan under Taliban rule. Escapees from the town testify that wives often fought with each other, usually verbally and sometimes physically, for their husband's extremely divided attention. Initial reports of such a dysfunctional social atmosphere prompted the Arizona government to raid the area in 1953. The result was a political disaster for Arizona Governor Howard Pyle, and outside law enforcement refused to touch the many crimes that occurred before and after the Short Creek Raid, including such horrible acts as polygamy, child marriage, rape, welfare fraud, and more. In some instances, some escaped persons were returned to their parents by the outside world, having no idea of the abuse that they would suffer before and after their flight. The closed FLDS societies were therefore free to get away with murder, metaphorically speaking, for more than half a century. Those trying to escape typically do so as individuals or with assistance from those who have already fled or been exiled but few such opportunities have presented themselves until the 21st century. During an attempted escape from the community in the late 1990s, in which a 16-year-old girl fled in a stolen pickup truck after being told she would be marrying an FLDS police officer, vehicles surrounded all exits out of the town within minutes. The 2006 arrest of FLDS prophet and president Warren Jeffs has allowed the public eye to witness the many layers of rot growing within the two communities. The vast majority of FLDS members depend on welfare, as the church leadership has traditionally owned what would otherwise be the property of its members through a trust known as the United Effort Plan. In the meantime, it siphons public assistance to sustain the massive families of its male members. Laborers at FLDS-owned businesses are typically unpaid or underpaid. Lacking any family, independent economic or social life outside the church, those who oppose, ignore, 
or otherwise irritate the FLDS leadership are driven from the community with no family, friends, employable skills, or understanding of the outside world, which they have been taught is dominated by Satan. Others are trafficked around the country to serve as unpaid labor for church-owned businesses, starting at the age of 12, solving the male side of the demographic imbalance created by polygamy. Roy Jeffs, the son of the incarcerated FLDS prophet Warren Jeffs, recalls escaping from an indentured job site in Des Moines, Iowa, halfway across the country from the Hildale, Colorado City area. Watching movies and TV, talking to girls without permission, playing sports, or even losing the competition for plural wives are cause enough for males to be exiled from the isolated, backward communities they have lived in their entire lives, giving rise to the infamous Lost Boys of Short Creek. Although there have been cases where police officers evict the Lost Boys themselves, the task is typically delegated to the families of the offenders, who are often all too willing to do so. The victims were left in the scorching deserts of Utah, Arizona, or Nevada, on the side of the highway, or in faraway cities like Las Vegas or Phoenix, with nothing to their name, no employable skills, contacts, or friends, nothing but an outside world that they have been taught to fear their entire lives. Estimated to number between 400 and 1,000 by 2004, they often became depressed, unemployed, homeless, drug addicted, and then in trouble with the law. The police forces of both Hildale and Colorado City are sometimes called the God Squad because they are dominated by FLDS members. So is every other civil service in the Short Creek area, as well as the city council. A cause and a consequence of the Short Creek Raid was the town's extreme hostility to the outside world. For decades, the average person lived without modern amenities such as TV, music, movies, radios, secular education, or unapproved reading materials. A journalist who visited Hildale in Colorado City in 2007, right after the arrest of Warren Jeffs, recalled that he and his cameraman were followed by police and that angry locals pelted their car with rocks, while others visibly and creepily watched them from within their different homes. Another traveler who visited the same year has stated that they didn't dare venture off the main road after dark and that there were no businesses clearly meant for outsiders. And the dysfunctional social atmosphere isn't the only problem that has plagued the Hildale, Colorado City area. In September 2015, a flash flood killed 12 people in Hildale and resulted in the disappearance of one more. Those who died sheltered in their vans when the sudden floodwaters swept their vehicles into a valley where they were then covered in water and mud, killing those inside. Given the chance, it is understandable that many people would want to flee at the first possible opportunity. The downfall of Warren Jeffs in 2006 gave many people the chance to do just that. From 2010 to 2020, the population of Colorado City fell from 4,800 to 2,500, while the population of Hildale fell from 2,400 to 1,100. None of this is to say that the people of these towns are responsible or deserving of their lot. Far from it. Each generation was raised in total isolation from the outside world, and with little to no tools to change that vision, they had no choice but to raise the generation after them in the ways they had been taught. The result has been a catastrophic cycle of abuse that has affected its victims in many ways. By the early 2000s, however, it was clear that the FLDS reign of terror over the region was weakening. 
In 1998, after the ailing FLDS prophet Rulin Jeffs, the father of Warren Jeffs, attempted to evict leadership challenger David Stubbs, the Utah Supreme Court ruled that townspeople could not be evicted from their land in Hilldale over religious disputes. It was the first instance of successful outside interference in the FLDS world since the failed Short Creek Raid in 1953. In 2005, the United Effort Plan was taken over by Utah's court system, and the following year, Warren Jeffs was charged for arranging underage marriages, child rape, and fleeing after these charges were filed. In 2012, policing in Colorado City was taken over by the Mojave County Sheriff's Department on the orders of the Arizona Attorney General on the grounds that the FLDS-dominated police force of Colorado City could not be trusted to uphold the law. In 2018, the police force of both communities was taken over by an outside police officer with a mandate from the state to hire two other officers. No internal candidates qualified. The weakening of the FLDS grip on power that culminated in Warren Jeff's imprisonment has led some former exiles and progressive-minded members to return and caused some remaining locals to question their faith. The United Effort Plan is also under investigation for its ties to Jeff's, and its administrators can be held liable for crimes that Jeff's committed due to its close association with him and the rest of the FLDS leadership. A landmark decision in November 2012 finally allowed individual families in the Hilldale, Colorado City area to claim the homes that they lived in from the financial stranglehold of the church. In 2018, Donya Jessup, the first non-FLDS mayor in Hilldale, won election over an FLDS-backed candidate. Initially, she faced massive opposition, including being repeatedly locked out of the town hall and handling the instant resignations of all but one city employee who refused to serve a mayor who was both a non-member and a woman. Nonetheless, she was re-elected in 2021, a sign of growing social progress in the former polygamous fortress. The town still face numerous challenges. A fair number of large houses exist, but considering that they were built for polygamous families with dozens of members, along with the massive population decline of the Hilldale and Colorado City area, many of these palatial homes are falling apart, along with the city's many unpaved roads. Large pluralities of residents remain in poverty as a result of the economic deprivation caused by polygamy. And all that aside, a dozen other FLDS-dominated towns exist across places as diverse as Texas, South Dakota, Nevada, New Mexico, Canada, California, and Mexico. Yet with its leader in prison, many informal factions of the FLDS church have cropped up in the two towns, with none able to match Jeff's influence or authority. For now, it seems that not seeing the bars on the cage is enough freedom for people who have never had it. All in all, there's a possibility that the residents of these two towns of terror will be able to breathe freely for the first time in their lives.